nice to talk to you in these uh, strange circumstances. Um, I suppose this, this event you're doing at the National Concert Hall, I can't imagine you've ever done anything like it before. Um, what was your reaction when, when you were asked? Because I'm sure you had to think about it for a moment or two. It's highly unusual. I mean, of course, we musicians rehearse in empty halls, so we know what that feels like and sounds like. But actually to do the real performance with nobody there is daunting because you have to try and conjure up the fact that there are human beings there listening to you. And you're wondering, I guess I will be wondering as I play, I hope they like it because I have no way of hearing if they're really bored or really locked in. So that's, that's going to be a challenge. And did you give it some thought? I mean, obviously everybody's happy to to weigh in at this time and, and, and do whatever they can and so on and so forth. But did you actually think about whether or not you would be actually able to perform in these circumstances? How do you mean? Uh, well, can you, can you do your thing in an empty room? The only other similarity is in a recording studio because I mean, I'm at the moment, you know, I'm making my series of recordings uh, for Chandos in a, in a, in a concert hall in a school in England, mm. and that's empty. Right. Um, and I have done recitals there in the same hall with people. And so playing, um, playing this music for a recording, it's not quite the same because you can stop and start. If you make a little mistake or you don't quite like how it went, you can do it again. But this, I have to get it right, you know, first time with an empty hall. So it's completely unique. And I'm looking forward to it because I love the hall. Uh, and it's great to play to the Irish audience and uh, indeed, I guess, international audience. Um, so, but it's a challenge, but I'm, I'm excited about it. It just occurs to me when you say that, Barry, um, for people who don't come from a classical music background and maybe don't attend classical music concerts, I think they might suspect that the audience is less important than it might be at a rock and roll show or at a jazz concert or something like that, where you know, there's improvisation, the, the, the energy is, is obvious, the, the communication between the band and the crowd and so on. How important is an audience to a classical musician? It's very important because the composer writes the piece of music. The musician, the interpreter has to find what is the essence of this piece and then on the stage, offer it to the listener. So it's a, it's a fantastic series of communication stages. Um, but it's, it's like we're talking because if I say something, you say something, we want kind of a, a kind of a rhetorical answer or feedback or uh, a new question or, and it's that kind of two way dialogue, which is really important in all music, in, in theatre, of course, and everything as well. But in classical music, it is just as if not more important than in other genres. So to perform this concert, Barry, at the National Concert Hall, when you know you don't have an audience, how, how does that affect how you approach what your repertoire will be for this? Well, John, this is a unique occasion in a unique set of circumstances. So there were many things to consider in choosing the, the pieces of music. I think it had to have something which was contemplative, maybe something very moving, which could be, you know, a, a, quite a sad, melancholic piece. Uh, then something which is, a, you know, a kind of affirmation of the human endeavor and spirit, you know, and uh, need to, to kind of overcome difficulties, which the human spirit does have. You know, we know what all the different heroes have done th through the centuries and indeed right now during this crisis. So um, I, it had to have a, a wide variety. That was the first thing. And then uh, originally I produced a program for the concert hall, which was all classical. It was some Russian music, some Schubert. Uh, and then I suddenly thought I was out having a walk like I do every day. Uh, and on the way back, I thought I've got to play a couple of Irish pieces. So I'd, I'd done a couple of discs for my record company of my own arrangements of different, whether it's Celtic tunes or traditional tunes. Uh, and I thought I got to play a couple. And being a northerner, 
Uh, although it's not sure if My Lag in Love is actually from the River Lagan in Belfast or some tributary <laughs> in Donegal <laughs> into Loch Swilly, but no matter, it's still the north. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the other one is Carrick Fergus. So I thought I'm going to play these couple of northern pieces. <laughs> some of those tunes, I think, might, you know, I'm thinking of the power of music in these circumstances, you know. Um, Tell me a little about what, what you feel about the, the, the impact music can have on people who are in trouble, and we're all in trouble at the moment. The, the, the effect that music can have, a sad piece of music or an uplifting piece of music. I think the great thing about music, whether you are an aficionado of jazz, classical, trad, pop, rock, whatever, the human being is sensitive to harmony. And I think, uh, depending on how the harmony is organized, depending on the genre, I think it strikes, you know, for want of a better word, it strikes a chord in the spirit of the person. So I think they match it up with something that's happened to them or they've been, their loved ones or friends have been involved in some horrible thing or some wonderful thing. And the brain hooks it up and kind of relives it in a new kind of technicolor way through the music. So I think if, if you've had a, an awful life event in your own life recently and you hear the slow movement of a Mahler symphony, you will most likely shed a tear because it will put you in tune with the pain that you had. But that doesn't mean that's a negative thing. That means that your body and your mind is accepting that pain and the music is enabling you to relive it again, but to kind of live it in a new way and a more accepting way and a way where you can see through what has happened and what, how you've developed and how you've moved on from that event. That's how I see it. I think it's a kind of a, a, a resonance that we feel when we hear music. Um, and what about and, for you personally, Barry, as a, as a musician, do you find the desire to play music increases or lessens in troubled? circumstances. I mean, there may be a temptation for some people at the moment who are normally creative, just not to be in the mood, you know, and not find that the thing that normally sustains them is any use to them at the moment. And then there may be others who are actually diving into what they do as the very thing that sustains them. Well, being a lazy person by nature, <laughs> it, I did sit in my little corner on my beanbag and think and muse and have a couple of pints of tea and you know maybe a glass of wine. Um, but I started to to see the, the 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 opportunity. I think time stood still hasn't stood still for everybody, of course, because so many people are busy, so many people are suffering, so many people are in the, the healthcare business uh, and doing a fantastic job. But I think for creative people and, and for many other people, uh, time seemed to st stop. And it was a moment of reflection. Uh, and so it took me a long time to come around to who I was pre pandemic. Um, but then I started to, you know, I, I looked at all the scores in my office here, and I started just standing there reading through them. And remembering when I performed that last and God, I'd love to do that again. And it was just kind of having a conversation with the scores on the shelf. Um, but that took a long time. Um, but then people were starting to ask me to make small videos and stuff for, you know, publicizing a concert that's been postponed till next year or a concert that's been postponed now and or may never happen again. And so I started doing that. And, then I started practicing again, really full time, because I had kind of stopped a little bit for a week or so. And then I, was, I would do half an hour, one hour a day, but now I'm back to three, three hours, four hours a day. Um, and I feel brilliant. I feel, it's been like a most amazing, this, you know, a creative holiday and physical mental holiday, which maybe I need it because uh, it's not really, I'm still at home, you know, yeah. but it's been a voyage of discovery and it's a self-discovery again. And to get a chance to, to play a proper, really a proper concert at the concert hall in June is you know, icing on the cake. 
And what about the power of music, Barry, as a, as a communal thing? I think we all know what it does for ourselves, but as a communal thing, and I'm thinking of some of the great classical music in history, you know, like the Shostakovich that was played in Leningrad and things like that, where it said it had a massive effect on the population. Music does have that power, doesn't it? It does, especially if uh, a whole group or a whole society, a whole community, a whole country has had a, 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 an event which affects everybody. And then a piece of music um, encapsulates the, the, the facets, the, the positives and negatives of that event. I think it can bring everybody together. I mean, it's, I mean, that Shostakovich is a particular case in point where Shostakovich was able to write that music which emboldened everybody and, uh, and it uplifted them. Um, music has that power. And even though it might be uh, something which is a virtual concert, there will still be that feeling, you know, this is great, you know, Dublin, the concert hall, these Irish musicians, they're doing something, they're creating something. Um, I think, you know, that's uplifting. I think it's great. Can you tell me a little about your repertoire, Barry, or do you want to keep that a secret for the, for the night itself? Well, it's just a collection of the favourite pieces of music I'm doing at the moment. I was doing at that moment <laughs> before this all happened. Um, so it's a little bit of Schubert, uh, Mumu Musico, musical moments. And then Rachmaninoff later on, the Russian composer, he wrote another set inspired by Schubert's called Momo Musical. So it's a couple of pieces from each set. Then a couple of pieces by Tchaikovsky from his the, Se the Seasons, a set of 12 pieces. And then Mussorgsky pictures an, at an exhibition, which is a, you know, it's a, a 30 minute piece, but it's a whole series of pictures where this uh, composer walks around visiting his old friend, Victor Hartmann, and seeing his paintings and writing music to suggest what the emotions are. So we're all kind of seeing things pictorially because we're, always, we're all using screens. And so I think, I thought that the pictures of an exhibition might be a good, good choice. And then of course the two Irish pieces. Um, are you obliged still, Barry, to play Tchaikovsky or is that always through choice? I'm thinking of you winning the Tchaikovsky competition all those years ago in Moscow. Is it, uh, is it, are you, is it, is it essential that it's part of your repertoire? Is it expected? Not so much in Russia, but in other countries, yes. They, 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 yeah, I'm asked all the time to play Tchaikovsky Number no. 1, the concerto with orchestra. Um, the solo music I've, I've, I'm recording at the moment, um, people don't really know the Tchaikovsky solo music that much. Um, but in Russia, I'm playing all sorts of music. I, I go there two, three times a year, and they don't mind if I play Schubert or Schumann or Tchaikovsky. It doesn't matter. And are you thinking, are you thinking much about the future at the moment, Barry? A lot of musicians in particular, a lot of artists are thinking of, but when, you know, when we get to the other side of this, how they will function, because your job requires you traveling all around the world and performing in rooms full of people with lots of other people. Are you thinking about that? Are you concerned about it? I am concerned. I've been thinking a lot about it. And in fact, last week I did a, a kind of a, a seminar with students from the Royal College of Music in London. So we had about 120 students from all around the world. Um, and we all met online. And the one question that kept coming up was, when will this end and how will we, what will we do? What will be our function? What is our role now? Because they're music students. They haven't started their careers. Uh, they're just barely adults. And they're, they're wondering what the future is. And I racked my brains because I don't really have a good answer, except all I, I said to cope, and this is what I'm doing, is try to remember why you, why you chose to be a musician, why you are inspired to be a musician, what is your raison d'etre, and stick to that and work at that. And then I said, it suddenly dawned on me that whenever we can work out all the logistics, I think music will become, live music will become incredibly important. No matter what, if it's jazz, trad, pop, classical, it will become incredibly important because people, once they're sure that they are safe, will just drink it up all the time because it, they will need the live experience. They will need to be with human beings. They will need to hear this music right in front of them as it happens. So I'm positive about the long term. I don't know about the short to medium. So Barry, um, when people are joining this concert on June the 19th, I assume what's going to happen is you'll walk out onto a, 
you know, an empty stage with a spotlight. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> Rather you than me, Barney. <laughs> yeah, I'll just keep my head down. Yeah. Are you going to, it's going to be odd. Are you, I mean, are you going to talk? Are you, you know, are you going to crack jokes or what? I mean, how do you, I don't know, how are you going to do this? I, I might say a couple of words before one of the Irish pieces or after an Irish piece. Uh, I'll try to make it as, as concentrated and as serious in the right sense of the word, concert. But an enjoyable concert because the music is so fabulous. Uh, and it's just, uh, my daughter asked me the other day, Daddy, how will you know if they want you to do an encore? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, so if the lights don't go off, I'll play another wee piece. If they go off, I'll just get off the stage. <laughs> Barry, all the best. And we'll, we'll see you and you'll sort of see us on uh, June the 19th at the National Concert Hall. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, John. Pleasure.